Hi, and welcome to another lesson in the physics video series. Today, we were going to be discussing the graphical addition of vectors. A vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction. So basically, we're going to be looking at arrows, the way they're pointing, how long they are, and how to combine them to get information about the net result of the movement of an object. Okay, let's get started. When starting the analysis of vectors, the most important thing to understand is that an arrow represents a physical quantity. So here's an airplane traveling to the right at 4 meters per second. I'm using simple numbers. This arrow is scaled so that 4 of the 4 meters per second equals something like 4 centimeters. Then this arrow, representing the wind pushing the plane from behind, which would be a tailwind, would be 3 meters per second and maybe to scale would be 3 centimeters. If the plane is moving to the right with 4 meters per second velocity and the wind is pushing to the right with a 3 meter per second velocity, 4 plus 3 equals 7. It's important to remember that a velocity is the speed of the plane in the direction that it's headed. So in this case, we have a compass rose up here in the corner, and we see the plane is traveling to the east. So it's 4 meters per second, comma, east, and the wind is pushing from behind 3 meters per second, comma, east. Since the east is defined as a positive direction, just like on the x-axis, 4 plus 3 equals 7 meters per second, comma, east. So this red vector here represents the sum of the wind and the plane. In the next example, the plane is heading directly into the wind. And so the 4 meters per second pointing to the east, but now the wind is blowing against the plane at 3 meters per second west. West is negative of east. So when I look for the resultant, I have the speed of the plane in the direction of east plus the speed of the wind in the direction of west. 4 meters per second east plus negative 3 meters per second east gives you 1 meter per second. So this plane, which is heading into the wind, it's a headwind, is slowed down to 1 meter per second from its original speed. So this is why vectors make all the difference in the world. When the wind pushes in the direction of the plane, it adds to the speed of the plane. But when the wind pushes against the direction and speed of the plane, then this is subtractive and it works against it. When two vectors are pointing in the same direction, they're called parallel vectors. They're parallel because there is zero degrees between them. When two vectors are pointing in completely opposite directions, as here the wind is pointing to the west and the plane is pointing to the east, there's 180 degrees between them. And you could see how I have the difference of the two vectors is this little red VR, the resultant velocity of the plane and the wind. In this third example, I have a crosswind. This is where I have orthogonal vectors. I maintain the plane's velocity at 4 meters per second to the east, in this case to your right. But now the wind is pushing across the plane from north to south. So this is 90 degrees to the original plane's direction. In the previous examples, the wind either pushed from behind against the tail and made the plane get faster, or it pushed directly against the nose of the plane, making the plane get slower. But here we have a crosswind. Now this is perfectly at 90 degrees because it makes the mathematics very easy to use the Pythagorean theorem. If the plane is moving to the right at 4 meters per second and it's being pushed by a crosswind heading south, what direction and new speed does the plane actually go? I chose very simple numbers because I knew that the Pythagorean would be easy to calculate and we wouldn't get lost in the math. So if the plane is moving to the right with 4 meters per second velocity and then you have the wind blowing south, I now connect the vectors head to tail. And in connecting the vectors head to tail, I can see that the tail of the first points directly to the head of the last. This red vector actually will replace the two black vectors of the plane's velocity and the wind's velocity. So the math is very simple, and we use the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5. And so we can see that the plane be pointing to the east but moving off on a diagonal at so many degrees which we're going to calculate now as the arctan of y over x we have negative 3 meters per second divided by positive 4 meters per second the meters per seconds both cancel the units and you're left with negative 3 fourths which gives you 36.9 degree offset 
So this angle, 36.9 degrees, is measured off of the horizontal, or the eastward pointing vector. And so the new vector of velocity for this airplane, when it's traveling at 4 meters per second to the east and experiencing a crosswind of 3 meters per second pointing to the south, is a speed of 5 meters per second offset by 36.9 degrees south of east. But what if the airplane must travel east and it does not want to be blown off course? Then it has to take a correction path. And the correction path forces the pilot to fly 36.9 degrees against the deviation of the angle. So it flies into the wind by the same number of degrees that the wind is pushing it off course. And so by flying into the wind and getting pushed off course, it actually remains along the eastward direction that it intended to fly. That's called a correction path. So in summary, an airplane in the wind is a wonderful example to understand how more than one vector can be analyzed to see what the resultant is going to be. We had the first example of parallel vectors. They simply add together. Then we had the second example of anti-parallel vectors. They were opposite directions. And then there's a subtraction, and then the answer is in the direction of the larger vector. Then we had orthogonal vectors, and that's a simple right triangle. Now there are other angles that we can solve for, but fortunately in the Regents curriculum, we no longer use the law of sines and the law of cosines. All we do with those is a graphical representation. And that's what we're going to take a look at in our next video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you for watching. I'm going to see you in the next video where we talk about the graphical representation of the resultant of two vectors that are not 90 degrees apart.